Hey, 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 welcome. It's another episode of the Culture Misfits Podcast. I am your host, Brandon, aka DJ Silk. And I just really wanted to give you a quick heads up that this is going to be a two part episode. So when it cuts off, just know that we're done. We're not finished, we're just done. And part two will be airing next week. So have no fear, it's all good. Sit back, enjoy, relax. Remember to follow the Culture Misfits Podcast at the Culture Misfits Podcast on Instagram. And then all the links are on that bio on the page. Just click in the bio, okay? All right, so sit back, enjoy, relax, and uh, I'll catch you. The last beef that mattered to me, I think the last one that I was kind of interested in was Meek Mill. Okay. And great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But only because Meek was playing himself. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like he was so yeah. it was so when he was he was Twitter fingers was not doing what he needed to do. You know. He kind of coined that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Twitter fingers, Twitter fingers was not popping the way pop. Um, but from a musical aspect point of view, I think like the Jay-Z Nas beef, man. Yeah. That's I feel like that was the last beef that actually meant something to me like I had an interest in like they was really going at it man um but uh, so think, yeah so from your perspective this this Kendrick verse does it seem like it came from left field for you or do you need some sort of background info well let's give the people some background you know what I feel like well as far as I'm gonna I'm going to what I'm going to say about what I feel about the verse his actual performance was dope yeah. Like I was like, yo, yeah. that's how you body somebody. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's how you do it. Like, um, you know, for years now people have been, you know, talking about like how dope Kendrick is. And I'm not gonna say that I don't think he's dope. I just don't I just never really felt like he was as dope as critically acclaimed as everybody was making him out to be. I felt like it was a little early. And again, not because I didn't think he was good or dope. It's just like they were putting people putting him on this pedestal, and I'm like like, I'm not moved by his shit the way I, I, like, I'm not, yeah, I'm not feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm not inspired. I'm not, like, I'm like, he's dope. And I think it was the way he, he used to perform with the the pitch changes and, and right. all that. It, it, it just wasn't catching me. Now, catch me 10 years from now, I'll probably be listening again and be like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's, let's rewind. Yeah. Because... I think that's a criticism you can also hold to others like Notorious B.I.G., right? Because he only had so much of a run before he passed. Yeah, but when when B.I.G. came out, man, his his instant impact for me. I mean, you see you see the, the album right there, right? <laughs> like, that's one of the first vinyls that I got as a DJ. Like, once yeah. I was officially, like, getting started. But in terms of, like, palatable, like, Big told story. When I listen to Big, I can visualize what he's rapping about. You know what I'm saying? Like, see, I, I, it's a generational thing now. I would say. Oh yeah, 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 for yeah, sure. Yeah. Because Kendrick's my Big. You know, right? Yeah, no, nah, nah. I get it. I get it. I get it. And like, let's not let's not conflate my not thinking he's as great as everybody else thinks that he's that he is to me saying that he's not a thorough artist and MC. I'm just saying like I I'm like, okay, all right. He's yo, he's good. He's he's definitely all right, I put it to you this way. Yeah. I feel like if Kendrick came out in the nineties, he would be one of just everybody else. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. And that goes for a lot of people. Right, yeah, for now, like yes. You put it's like it's not it, it's the competition, right? And right now the competition's not all that thorough. Like there's yeah. a lot of there's just a lot of mediocre, horrible talent out there, right? So, of course, that's why he feels, that's why when he's, he comes with something, substance, it's like, yo, he's so great. But I'm like, yeah, 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 all right. So you've, at this point, already acknowledged his stature, whether you agree with it wholeheartedly or not. You've, no, you you, you yeah. acknowledge it, right? Yeah, absolutely. As compared to now a Drake. Right. In terms of what he comes with, which is arguably the whole package. All the, the whole package and then some. Yeah. Well, I mean, he raps, he sings, he does pop, he does hip hop. Like, yo, if you wanna, if you wanna battle rap, he's going to battle rap you, and he's going to embarrass you more than likely. You, like, if you're gonna go the back and forth, like he's 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 operated in every lane and been consistent. Like he hasn't disappointed. Like I haven't heard anything. Well, no, I. 
Tusi, Tusi, whatever the Tusi slide was a big disappointment for me because that was the song is just trash for me. You know what, bro? What I know whose side you're on. Who's and that's all I wanted to say was no, from the gate. Who side? You fucking with Drake and them, dog. I can see no, it. No, 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 no. Your whole tone, side. your whole tone no, switch. No, I have no side. No, I have no side because what I didn't say was what Kendrick did in that verse was incredible. Right. He bodied him. I'm just saying, like, just setting the table. If we're just setting the table and we're yeah. just talking about artists and we're talking about, like, let's take the B side out of it, right? Yeah, yeah. But Drake, I love his music. Aside from two C slide, right? <laughs> when he does like those type of those yeah. type of records, but what I'm saying is, is that from the beginning, Drake has operated in pretty much every sector of the genre of hip hop and even R and B and even like world music, and he's made hits and he's been consistent. Yeah. So to me, like, all right, he's a thorough dude. Kendrick Lamar has made great music he's a great lyricist he's a great performer right but he's also only been in one lane he's not ventured he hasn't done any tried to do afro beats and that's not a knock against him at all you know what i'm saying like right. he's operated it, it's like <laughs> he's done what he's supposed to do he's done he's he's worked well in the area the lane that he's comfortable in and i don't take nothing away from that from that you know what i'm saying yeah but now i would say we'd have to condense it Okay. So We'd have to condense it now because this is hip hop. Okay. We're not expecting Drake to sing in response to Kendrick now. No, he's gonna and yes, you're right. Yes. I I mean that would be lame. That would be some oh, what was the show? Um with Lucius Lyon and uh, uh <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you gotta yo, that's a dated the, reference, bro. It no, it's like not it. that dated. It's the it's the joint um with um it was on Fox. It was um Lucius Lyon. That sounds yeah, like Yeah, Lucius from Oh, come on. This is killing me. Only Lucius I know is off of Everybody Hates Chris. That's all No, I mean. no, no. This was this was within the last 10 years. It oh. was the show that went against basically um, power. It was like the same thing with... with um, oh, um, what? Empire or something? Yes, Empire. Oh, okay. When... When the brother went up against the other brother, it was like a battle rap, and like Jamal sang. It was like he, <laughs> he he went against the battle rapper, and then and at the end was like bitch, and it's like yo, bro, nah, <laughs> flag on the play, yeah. flag on the play. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. So no, 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 no. I'm not. No, Drake is not going to sing. He he's not going to sing. He's going to go into the same bag that he went into when he was destroying Meek Mill. He's going to go into the bag. Like anytime somebody has questioned his hip hop, you know, relevance. And so, yeah, he's it's going to be good. Whatever Drake comes with, it's gonna be good. Yo, it's, yo, J. Cole is going to be good. Cause J. Cole is a hip hop whole old school dude. You're on that side. I, I you're you don't realize what you're saying, but you're choosing a side in what you're saying. Well, have, have they responded yet though? No. And so I'm not, I didn't say anybody won. I, I said Kendrick killed it. I, I've listened to the verse several times. I enjoyed it. I, I was just merely speaking in just all of the music, not just outside of the beef. I don't have, honestly, I don't have a dog in the fight. We all win. Right, right. We actually all win. And that's why I get so giddy because I never thought this would happen. I never thought we'd get to this point because, really? I mean, you have to understand that they've been beefing for a while, just subliminally. So what's the beef over? What's the problem? Do you, that's, as you understand it. Well, um, it's a it's a it's a thing of competition. Firstly, okay. you know it's hip hop. It's what it's grounded on. You guys want to be buddy buddy. You guys want to be friends. Mm -hmm. It's like comedy. We're not getting rid of all the hate, dark humor. We're gonna keep that in. It's part of it. Okay. The beef is part of hip hop. We have to keep that going because everybody. The game isn't good right now. The game is fucked up right now. The numbers are down. Everything's mediocre. You guys have released mediocre albums and you're celebrating. What are you What are you celebrating? Mm -hmm. And that's where Kendrick is coming from. In my opinion. And okay. then on top of that, personally, I just think that he believes Drake is a corny individual. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do. Right. Right. And this is do. this is your GOAT? You know, this is the guy? This is the face of it all? I'm offended. Are you? I'm speaking from, from his perspective. Him, from yeah. his, okay. But I'm a hip-hop artist as well. And I, you know. Yes, you are. And I, uh, hey, Kendrick's a, an influencer in, in terms of like... He's a seminal influence on my career, I would say. So that's a personal influence. It's a personal influence. And Drake as well. Drake as well. Right. Okay. So so this is where this is where it gets it gets there's the the nuance, right? I understand. I understand where Kendrick's coming from. I understand. I get it. I get it. But if hip hop 
was to let's look at Kendrick as a vehicle. Okay. J. Cole is a vehicle. Okay. Drake is a vehicle, right? With gas tanks. Like, you know, and their the amount of music equals the the size of their gas tank, which means like the bigger the gas tank, the further the vehicle can go. Okay. All right. So if you were trying to go the farthest distance, whose vehicle would you get in? Drake. And that's why I see why J. Cole was partnering up with Drake. But that obligation is, is strange to well, me. But I don't think, is it a, in what way are they partnering it up? They're on tour together, man. Right. Okay. Because I think that helps J. Cole more than it helps Drake. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, right. absolutely. But no, I mean, but it also provides a different dimension to a tour. Like a show, so Drake has already done the tour. He just came off tour yeah. and 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 put bodies in the seat, right? Yeah. He he doesn't he doesn't necessarily need to make any more money. I'm not. I know he wants to make money, but he doesn't need to make more money because he's making money hand over fist, right? So if you added J Cole, then you're all for, all you're doing is giving your audience the same, pretty much the same audience is going to go see Drake. Is the same audience is more or less going to see J Cole, right? Times ten. Yeah. So, yes, to your point, J. Cole benefits from going on tour with Drake. Okay. Mm -hmm. But also, J. Cole has been making music. J. Cole has been doing, J. Cole has been active, right? Yeah. Has Kendrick been active? No. <laughs> I'm just saying that's the extent of their allegiance from everyone's perspective. Like, right. Your perspective. So, this goes to the nuance part of it and to like my analogy about the gas tanks and, and being vehicles, right? This is a business, and and you know, fan facing. All we're all we're worried about is the music and like the the imagery and all that stuff, right? But then on the backside, you have people that need to get paid. You have venues that need to get paid. You have business that needs to be handled, right? Yeah. And so, therefore, money needs to be generated. And if you have three artists, where one is a super mega artist. Was the second one is a mega artist, and the third one has the respect of hip hop and all the admiration and all the love and all that. But catalog wise, tour wise, they're they're not they're not on the same level. Like anybody in their right mind is not going to be like, yo, let's yo let's let's go with Kendrick and whoever he's going to go with. So they refer to themselves as the big three, right? And they so, are. So yeah, it sounds like Kendrick's third for you. I they, I mean there it's a tie. Like because it's like a boutique. Like so for me, J. Cole and Kendrick are boutique artists in a way. Like okay. they have their fan base. Like they're not they're not they're not gonna go to the Wells Fargo Center. And for those of you who don't know who what, what Wells Fargo Wells Fargo is a big place. Actually, they're not gonna go to Citizens Bank Arena, mm. which is a baseball field, which is outdoor, which is where Beyonce had her concert, where um what's her Taylor Swift had her concert, where you can put 40, 50,000 fans in there. Is J. Cole going to be able to go into Citizens Bank? No, I don't think so. No. Dr Ken Drake? Sure. Okay. Kendrick Lamar? No. Okay. So they're, they're even, they're tied. They're tied, right? Yeah. So I, I, would, I would beg to argue that when they were putting the tour together... If I'm sitting there, if I'm, I, and who, I, do we know who's behind the tour that they're doing? Like, who the production company is? Like, is it, because I sincerely doubt that Drake was mm -hmm. like, yo, I want to do a tour with J. Cole, blah, right. blah, blah. Right. I'm sure, um, and I can't think of the name, uh, what's the nation, um, what's the, the big conglomerate, One Nation, whatever. It's, One Nation? You talking about the label associated with these about, No, I'm talking about the Live Nation. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Live Nation as a promoter. Mm -hmm. I got people, I'm sorry. I gotta get yeah, the ticketing system, all that. Yeah. Like, right, they're the ones that put these tours together. They're the ones that were like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do Jake, Drake, J. Cole for a tour because we're going to keep making this money. Yeah. That's... I that that's my that's my assumption. I'm not speaking from guessing and assumptions and my understanding of how the business works, right? Yeah. I'm sure maybe Kendrick was like, yo, I wanna be on the tour too. And maybe the numbers didn't work out in terms of the cut. Like what Kendrick wanted versus what they were willing to pay. There's a I mean it's nuance and you know that you know this from doing your events and your parties. Mm -hmm. How on your level, mm -hmm. how complicated is it for you to put an event together? It's very complicated. Right. Yeah. And, and and so Max 
Max, how many people, I mean, guess me, how many people have you had at one? What's your big, what's your biggest event so far? Like in terms of people that showed up? Yeah. About 330. Okay. Yeah. All right. So 330 people. Okay. Which, and you probably were in a venue that probably held what? Like 400, 500, 400. 400 right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's one venue, which is basically one to two vendors, maybe three vendors. When you talk about the venue, whether or not they provide security, um, and whether they do the bar thing or not, right? And then, so you have your marketing that you have to do, which you guys are doing in house, more or less, right? Right. And then, you know, you're the talent, so you're dealing with all that. So, multiply that by a thousand when you're talking about putting a tour together, a worldwide tour, where you're where you're going to be. I, I'm assuming they're going to be in arenas like like outdoor parks, like Citizen Bank. Mm. They're going to be in basketball stadiums, football stadiums, baseball stadiums, right? Like that's mad complicated, and there are so many people involved, right? Right. So again, what didn't like didn't Kendrick say he was like retiring or like at one point like a year or two ago? Sounded was, like it, yeah. Right. Like this was the last album. This was the last, and I and I understand it's probably the last album on that label, right? Right. Okay. So you keep up. Yeah, I do keep up a little bit. So Kendrick, I don't understand why you're upset when you have fought, you have fallen back. At least publicly, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, what conversations are happening. Yeah. But us, as we discuss this from our perspective, mm -hmm. from my vantage point, Kendrick, I forgot about Kendrick Lamar. Right, right. I have not forgot about J. Cole and I have not forgot about Drake. And it's not because I'm in the scene like that. It's not like because I'm checking the blog. No, it's his stuff. fault. Well, I, I don't want to I don't want to assign blame in that way. I just want to say that is the consequence of the how he has conducted himself in his career the last four or five years. That's all. Like, if you're not really doing features, if you're not touring, if you're not doing interviews, then you're forgotten. So is it worth Drake responding? Or is this, this it makes it, you're making it sound like this came from left field, which it had. It, it feels like it, right? Right. I think for the love, I think for the game, like, so if Drake wanted to be an asshole, like if I was Drake and I wanted to be an asshole, I wouldn't respond. <laughs> and, the, and the reason why I wouldn't respond is because I'm basically like Kendrick turned on the light and I'm flicking the light off. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, like you're so not important to me. I'm not even going to bother wasting my time going into the studio and responding. I'm just going to go about my business and watch you fizzle out. And it's starting to seem like that because we put these timelines on a response right. Right. and it's been over 24 hours. <laughs> I asked my little brother. He was like, he'll give it till Monday. And I'm like, so 72 hours for you? I think. I mean, they just, I heard the song, what, on Friday? Yeah. It's like Thursday or Friday or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, these guys are businessmen, right? Yeah. And nothing happens by accident. Nothing, you know, maybe some of the consequences will be accidental or unintentional. But um, it's, it's a good look for Drake to respond because that's just a reminder like, oh, yeah, I'm a backpacker too. Like, yeah, I've been doing my, you know, my Afro beats and I've done my house thing. And I've done, like, but even that's a prideful thing. Like, does Drake, does Drake have that much of an ego to feel the need to even reestablish that? Like, yeah, I can rap as well. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of psychological. It's psychological warfare well, as well. Well, it's a time thing, right? Like, like, it's hard. Like, it sounds like Kendrick is the one with the problem and Drake doesn't have the problem. So... If Drake, like, if I don't have a problem with you, like, if you came up to me and pushed me because I did, you, because you're mad at me and I'm not mad at you, I'm gonna have a hard time fighting you because I'm like, I'm not, nigga, I don't even, I'm not, I don't have a problem with you. Like, yo, chill, relax, like, easy. I'm gonna walk away versus, like, you're mad at me and I don't like you. So now that's the kindling for the fire. Like, we, we about to get it in. I don't know that Drake had necessarily has a problem with Kendrick. Like, the Kendrick's problem is he doesn't have the success. It seems like I'm speaking from guessing. It sounds like Kendrick is upset because he doesn't feel like he's getting the due that he thinks he deserves. Mm. So he's look, he's pointing at the guy that's literally on top, yelling at him and cussing at him because the guy is on top. And the guy on top is probably looking down on him like, <laughs> I don't know, I'm about to get in my private jumbo jet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to fly to Turks and Caicos for a few days. I'm going to chill. And, you know, while I'm doing that, I'm going to make another several hundred million, probably because of all my publishing and all the things that I got going on. You know, Drake has a station on Sirius XM. Kendrick doesn't have a station on Sirius XM. 
And I'm sure Drake can be like, yeah, I don't want any of Kendrick's music played on 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 Sound 42. Like, right, right. You know, like Drake can be like, yeah, uh, I'm not doing any festivals or anything that Kendrick's on since he's on this bullshit. <laughs> so if you a festival person, producer, and you have a choice between Drake or Kendrick, who are you picking? Damn, you think Drake really has that much power to blackball Kendrick? Yeah, he does. Be- because we live in a capitalistic society, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So if you are a producer of a show and you're trying to sell tickets for the highest value possible and you want to ensure that people show up and you're like not a special like you're not a like a rolling loud type situation or maybe a south by southwest where you're you you want a kind of more boutique artist, right? If you're like, "Yo, I want I want to I want the heaviness. I want the the big shit, right?" And you're like you approach. You have an opportunity to get Drake, but Drake is like, yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sharing a stage. I'm not sharing a. I'm not sharing a line. You know, the the no marketing with Kendrick Lamar at this yeah. point in time. Who are you gonna go? Who? What are you gonna do? Right, and that's the only stipulation. And you're like, yeah, yeah. sorry, Kendrick. Right? Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. as a executive of yeah. Yeah, because you have a you have a responsibility to everybody that is invested in you, everybody that you've hired, and all the other acts that you have on on the bill. You have a responsibility to make sure that they are taken care of in their time, and then they make the money that you promise that they're going to get paid, and that it, it's a success. So, so Drake, anybody who is who's in a position who's in a draw position has the power to blackball anybody that is below them. You don't have the power to blackball anybody above you, but you definitely have the power to bl- blackball below you intentional or unintentional. And I believe Kendrick acknowledges Drake having more money and more power, but it's still a respect thing, which is the third note. Yeah. Respect is bullshit. Like the only, the only people I want respect from are the people that I care about. If I don't know you, I don't care. Damn, that's what he said in the verse too. <laughs> DOT the money power respect. The last one is better. It's a lot of goofies with a check. Yeah. Right. So Damn, so I mean, he made it sound good. Yeah, I, he I made believed it sound good, yeah. I believe respect mattered more than all of that at one point. Well, I mean, hearing the song for sure. Well, yeah, he's buying in he's he's look, man, it was a it was a it was a great performance. It was a great verse. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking with you, Kendrick. Like he killed it. Like it was dope. Like but the businessman in me is like, bro, <laughs> you need to fall back. Like, if you want, if you want respect, if you want to be mentioned in the top three, if you want to be number one, then you have to do number one shit. Yeah. You have to show, you have to appear. You have to be on people's minds. You can't just do your thing and then fall back. He can't he can't be a Jay-Z right now because he doesn't have the Jay-Z catalog of 10, 11, 12 crazy albums. He doesn't have 30 plus years of music. Yeah. He can't be a Nas because you don't you haven't been around long enough and you haven't put he hasn't put out enough content to lock people into their brain. Like you mentioned Notorious B.I.G. I think it's funny that I'm like, damn, he really only had two albums. Technically three albums because Life After Death was a double album, right? He's had three albums. He had a very relatively short run, but his music was undeniable. And so that is a rarity that even in 2024, Big to a certain extent is still relevant, Mm -hmm. right? Because of the impact when Big was out, he was out. He 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 was everywhere. He made his imprint. I don't really feel like Kendrick ever really made that imprint. He made he's made he has made great music. He's had great albums, but he has not shown up in the other spaces that artists need to so, show up in to make their imprint the way everybody else has. What even is that though? He's gotten the accolades. You like, got it. You got it. Just the same way, like you remember when you you sent me that single and it was dope. Like yeah, yeah I, really great song, right? That I heard, and I'm like, "Yo, you got to send me that." Yeah, right? I remember, right? And then you sent it to me. You sent me the raw file. I mean, you sent me the file, and it just had the file name. There was no metadata attached to it. Right, there was right, no right. cover art, and I'm like, and I and what did I tell you? Okay, right. I think I get what you're saying. Right, you have to service your shit. 
You have to service it. You have to. It's like I don't care how dope the song is. I got a hard drive filled with lots of great music yeah. that no one has ever heard because the artist never serviced it. You have to show up with it. You have to make sure that whoever has it gets the full experience of whatever that experience it is. Is so it's it's a simple. This is simple things like the file name that's attached. So when somebody goes into their hard drive and they see, they don't see song A B C by artist blah blah blah. It's no the title of the song, the artist, the date, and then cover art, mm. <laughs> right. That it's those little things. It's showing up at podcasts and doing little interviews, whether the our podcast is big or small or whatever, right? Right, right. To, you know, now you get to a certain point and then you're like, all right, I'm not doing a small podcast because now it's a time thing. Like, I don't, like, it do, doesn't make sense to go to the small podcast because it doesn't serve the artist. It serves the podcaster more so than it serves the artist. Right. But it's just servicing the record, it's making sure that. DJs have it. It's making sure that you're doing drops for DJs. It's coming through and taking pictures and, and being present and available and visual so yeah. people think about you. Like, yo, Drake did that, that Bobby ass. Did, did yeah, he did thing, do right? that. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Yo, Drake is well beyond a point where he would need to do a podcast like that on a, a budding podcast. But those are the things that I don't think, and I can't, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure Kendrick never did. He put himself as, I feel like more of a, like a Sade, um, like I think like Prince, right? Um, artists who are like, yo, their talent is undeniable, right? But they're not on the scene, right? They let they allow their music to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. Sade is not like, why aren't y'all talking about me when you mention the Queens or blah 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 music, right? Prince, Prince's only beef was with Michael Jackson. Right, because that they were going head to head. But generally speaking, throughout the course of his career, he was able to allow his music to speak for itself, the greatness and things like that. He was he was able to be in the off to the side, but he his talent was so great that it spoke for itself. But everybody else, nah, man, you gotta show the fuck up. <laughs> when it's a party, yeah, you gotta you gotta at least breeze through real quick. You have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it was a, it's a level of truth to that because these guys were are still relatively young now, but even then, you know, you guys are still fresh. I feel what you're saying. Yeah, you have to, I, you know, when I, I was working, when I was doing a lot of clubs and, and getting all these opportunities, it was because I was out. Like, if I wasn't actually paid, like, if I wasn't spinning somewhere, then I was somewhere. Right. So then the next time the promoter's like, yo, Silk, I'm gonna have you the next time, you know, blah blah. Yo, I'm gonna have a party. Yo, Silk, DJ Silk, I'm gonna get because I'm fresh on their mind. Right. Right. As soon as I fell back, you get forgetting you get forgotten about because because that spot that I would have been standing in at the party, by the bar having a drink, chopping it up, another DJ has now sat in that spot. And now the promoter sees them and is like, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because Yo, we're all busy. <laughs> like it's right. not a personal thing. Yeah. So Kendrick, Kendrick has been the dude that's like, yo, I'm off to the side. Like, yo, I'm doing my music. Yo, I, I think the accolades, the early accolades, probably hurt him because it made him feel like he was in a position that he really wasn't in in terms of longevity. Like in the moment, yes, when the new song is out or the new album is out, yes, and he does this whole like. You know, the label puts them on the whole do that's a, thing. That's a hot take. I've yeah. never heard that it's been said before. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it gives you a false sense of security. Mm. Like, oh, yo. And then he could chill out. He thought he could chill. He could chill out. It's right. like, yeah, I'm great. Like, yo, these cats is comparing me to, like, everybody that's ever done it that is at, at the top of Mount, the hip-hop Mount of Olympus. Like, and he is. Like, I don't want to, I'm not ever going to take that away from him. Yeah, so it's like an underdog effect right now. Yeah, you want him to, of course, show up, show out. But I just want him. I hope that this move was just a business move, and like it's just his way of getting out there. That's what I'm hoping. Once again, yeah, right. It's disappointing to me when people uh, get upset about suffer, having to suffer the consequences of their actions when those consequences are not are negative. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, know, when you the moment you decided that you were going to Yo, this is my last album. Yo, when you say this is my last album, there's the moment where people are like, oh, man, that's damn. And then like, all right, then who's next? Right. Because you're, why do I need to care about you? 
like everything you've given me everything that you're willing to give me you're not going to give me anything more you you haven't shown me that you could operate in a different space like and be entertaining or whatever so yeah i'm gonna forget about you and i'm gonna move on to this person who is still putting out albums who's still doing tours who's still doing interviews who is still creating content and giving me something that we're just greedy like we as an audience yeah. as fans we just want we want more we we're consumers we get the song whatever we get the album we love it it's great it may or may not stay in our our regular rotation but then it's like yo what's next and if you want to be if you want to keep going then you have to be in the space where you're like yeah i'm gonna give you next i'm gonna give you next i'm gonna give you next mm. so yeah you, you shut it all the way down. <laughs> what? I didn't mean to shut it down, man. I'm just saying, like, yo. I mean, but yo, Kendrick's right. That verse was nice. So you give him till Monday, Drake, to respond. I'm not get, yo, you're not paying any time out on it. You'll hear it when you hear, it, or maybe I not at all. The, I want I, whatever it's going to be. I want it to be dope. Yeah, I want all of, all of it to be dope. Yeah. I want it all to be dope. Yeah. I want I want to see the artistry, the creativity. Yeah, I want to see. Um, I just want them to, I want to see them operate in, in on the level that I know they're able to operate on. Um, but I'm at a stage in life where ultimately one way or the other, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I feel you. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, if they never respond, fine. If Drake never makes another record again, somebody else will come along. Yeah. If J. Cole doesn't make it, yo, somebody else will replace it. Like, yeah. it... it these guys, I know, I know how easy it is to feel like you're irreplaceable, unreplaceable, whatever. <laughs> we are all replaceable, and somebody else will come along and do it better. So that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, because I think of that, um, that concept of being replaceable with like your day to day nine to fives. Of course, we're yes. all replaceable, but even to that magnitude, that stature that they're in, they're uh -huh. still replaceable. Yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like yo, when these cats talk about yo, I got a number one album, right? That doesn't matter to me unless the other nine albums that you, you're you're number one against are dope albums. If they're all trash albums, just because just means you're first in being trash, hmm. <laughs> right? Because it's just a spot. Like yeah, th there's like radio stations, whatever they have their six to eight or whatever ten slots that that need to be on the radio for an eight week rotation. So if all eight songs are trash. Because everything out right now is trash, then yeah, you being on a radio is like good for you. But that's not to me. That's not validating your greatness. It just means that you're you're the best that can be right now, mm. right? But if you get that spot and everything and everything is dope, and you still got that spot, that's what makes you great. Well, let's just see this as a wake up call for all the artists that are okay. either coming up or that are actually in the the sphere right now. You know, because we're putting lyricism now on the pedestal, right? As opposed to all the mumble rap, as opposed to all the party tracks. <laughs> yes. I think you feeling a way about that. Are you are you excited? I'm as very, very uh, I'm very excited, man. Like this actually makes me want to start writing rap songs more often now because I've been doing a lot of melodic stuff as of lately. But um, okay. I definitely want to get my lyrical bag again and start dissing some local heads. You know, maybe getting some beef. Uh, but nah, man. Like, <laughs> well, first of all, this is the Culture Mrs. Podcast. We're 36 minutes in. My man C's is in the building. We haven't, like, actually, I'm very excited because I've always wanted to have, uh, like, a music-based con uh, podcast. Oh, really? I was actually thinking about this yesterday. I was like, I don't even know how he feels about us when we talk about music because it's uh, like, there's a lot of music-based podcasts and maybe he doesn't want to do that. Nah, I, yo, you see the album cover behind you. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, nah, I absolutely would love, love to do that. So no, I love this conversation. I just never have been able to have it before because it was poo pooed, and yeah. within my you know my situation. Yeah, and I, the dynamics we have actually, me being younger, you being a little older, and right, right, right. So it works. So no, I loved I love talking about music. I, now, granted, I love older music, right. right? But I need to have conversations about new music because I because I don't have the energy to keep up on my own. Plus, the shit sucks in my most. What we hear, like what is being pushed, what is being pushed, the, again, the sexy reds, the, yeah, uh, like that music is, it just has me feeling like, ugh, I don't even, I don't even want to waste any space in my brain. I don't want to burn any of my lifetime on talking about stuff like that, yeah. especially because I don't have nice things to say and I don't ever want to use my platform to just be ugly. 
So you've never felt pressured to play these sort of songs at your events when you're DJing? I don't know because I don't do events where I feel like I got to play those songs. <laughs> That's that I had to get to that point. Yeah. I had to get to that point where um, like I walked away from it. Mm. I walked away from DJing. Like I like I got to a point where I had everything I had everything in place that I, I felt like I needed to get to where I wanted to go. And I felt like my soul was dying because I was literally a jukebox. Like I wasn't, I wasn't able to be the artist DJ that I wanted to be. I'm, I'm basically playing to the crowd, and I wasn't liking what I had to play, what I had to play to make them happy. What even is an artist DJ today? Like when I think of artist DJs, they're doing like EDM and house music now. So my personal definition of an artist DJ is what I do in my soul school mixes, mm -hmm. where the play I play what I think you need to hear. And I do it in a way that is different from everybody else in terms, because the technology allows for it. But I have walked away. I don't have, I don't feel any pressure to conform. Mm -hmm. Like, so you're, if you, if you listen to soul school, if you go to mix cloud and you listen to the soul school mixes, you're there because you want to hear what I want you to hear versus you need it. Somebody needs a DJ and they need somebody to play records. So just get anybody. You try to get the best person possible, the best DJ possible, right. but ultimately it's like, yo, I want you to play these certain records. And that's, that's not me. It's why I don't do wedding receptions anymore. <laughs> because it's like, you want to program me to the point, to the extent that I'm like, I, it's, I'm not happy. Like, cause I don't, cause I'm embarrassed to play a sexy red record. Like I, I tried. I played it. I played it once when I was doing the joint at this swingers club, uh, and they, somebody asked me. They kept hassling me, and I'm like, "All right, I'll play it." <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. Like the, I was seriously embarrassed, and it just, it just, it reminded me, like, yeah. yo, this is why you walked away before because you didn't want to play the, you didn't want to play certain records, and so that's me as an art. I say I'm an artist DJ because I really take the time to put mixes together that. After you hear the mix, when you hear a certain song, no matter where you're at, you're expecting to hear the next, the song that I played after that. <laughs> to, you're thinking like, oh, shit, no, 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 no. It's not going to be song B. It's just song A, and that's that's how I that's how I mix. And so, yeah. No, that's, that's that was a real valuable subject right there, just the fact that what you play also is a reflection of you. You, you yeah. weren't even making that song with the artist at all. That has nothing to do with you, but right. you're playing it. Yes. So, therefore, it is... Coming out of you, and I, that's, that's it represent. Well, it's yeah. my it's my read. It's my read of the moment. Yeah. So, like when I'm in here and I'm doing these mixes, like yes, it's it's definitely on like me I'm mixing with your shirt off and everything. No, I don't do that. Not yet. I thought but, you was well, doing that. It wasn't no. yet. <laughs> your whole chest was out. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I should. It was going to give me some money. But uh, <laughs> no. But if I'm doing an event, like of course I'm going to respect the the venue. I'm going to respect the crowd. I'm looking at the crowd yeah. and. I'm just making sure that I'm playing the best music for the crowd. That said, if it's a crowd that wants music that I don't agree with, I'm not going to do that party because I'm not going to do them a disservice because I'm not going to play to my best ability because I'm not going to be into what I'm playing because I'm going to hate it. Right. Right. So they're not having a good time and I'm not having a good time. So why are we even doing this? <laughs> so the person who requested such songs, you think they're having more of a good time than the all overall atmosphere? So here's my thing about requests. <laughs> here's my thing about song requests. Because more people would have to love that song too. For Well, it depends. And that's, it's important to have discernment, right? Yeah. There are songs, like, so playing a, se a sexy red record, more than likely it's going to work mm -hmm. because like, I'm just going to be the one that's like irritated for the two minutes that it's on. <laughs> but like more than likely, depending upon the room, it's going to work. Yeah. Right. My problem with with um, request in general is is that a person who is not the DJ is trying to dictate what's happening for everybody in the room. I am not trying to make one person happy. I'm trying to make the room happy. Mm -hmm. So if you come along and you give me like ask for some crazy song, right? This that this song that song number twelve off of such and such as album that you just really like that nobody else has really ever heard, yeah. and you're hassling me to play it, I'm going to kill. I could possibly kill the vibe in the room 
because it's not familiar. When people party, they want to party to familiar shit. Yeah. New music is broken on the radio, on the internet, on mix shows. That's where new music is broken. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about a party, whether it's a roller skating event, whether it's a house party, whether it's a club, whether it's a special a wedding, whatever it is, that is a space for music that people are that generally know. Yeah, yeah. Right? People will request songs that they know and they're very intimate with, but the, the majority of the room doesn't know. And so there's the problem. It's like, nah, man, you, you like fall back. Or they request a song that is is like people know, but it's the time is not right. Right. It's, too early it's in it's the, too early. Yeah. It's too early. It's it's or it's off. Like I'm playing I'm playing records that are like a hundred, hundred and five beats per minute. Like um like so something like Truffle Butter would be a record. Mm -hmm. Um in that in that that uh, B per BPM range, right? And they come up and they want to hear something that's in like 70 beats per minute. Something slow. Right. So were, right. right? Like, yo, I'm I'm doing a whole reggae set right now. Yeah. I'm doing an Afrobeat set. And you're asking, you want to knuck if you buck? Like, yo, I love that record. I got a lot of great memories with that fucking record. But this is not the time for that. Yeah. And so while you're in my face trying to get me to play this record that's not time, now I'm, I'm out of my groove with where I'm going to go because I'm two or three songs. I'm always two or three songs ahead of where I'm at right now. Mm. Like I know where I'm taking things. Any good DJ, you know, like I'm, this is, this is the journey we're going on. So a person coming up and, and making a request, it's like, yo, you fucking the whole thing up. If you're dealing with a legitimate artist level DJ, right. you're just dealing with a DJ who is just the guy who plays records. And yeah, and they love requests because they get off on making one or two people happy. I get off on making the room happy. Right, right. So, yeah, if you want to make a request, make it early in the night. No, that's a good point because anybody can just play a playlist off of Spotify and, you know, hook it up to the aux for the night. But you <laughs> yeah. you don't feel that, you know, it, there's a there's a feeling, there's a vibe. I hate to say that word, but no, no, there's an energy not. associated with it. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Like, I love, my favorite thing is to see somebody sitting at a bar or just sitting down somewhere and they nodding their head. To me, that's that's more powerful. Like I made that was more of a power play than somebody actually getting on the dance floor dancing. Because people who dance dance, right? right? That's the thing, right? But when I see someone sitting down in a bar and they start nodding their head, and if I like, it's like, oh, I know I got them, right? And I try to pay attention to that as well. Just how how DJs how often are just looking up to see who's like either dancing or just bobbing their head. So I try to show love. I do try to show love when DJs are around and. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, man. I mean, like, that's their job. And then, like, like you're saying, I mean, they may, may or not be artists, but at the end of the day, they want to know that they're doing a good job. And the only way they can really see that is through the rhythm. Through the rhythm, what people are doing, if they're smiling, if they're, they're nodding their head, if they're, um, like, because, per like, the music, your imprints, you're imprinting on these experiences that people are having at a party or a venue or whatever. The music is part of the imprint to the memory. It's part of the night. Yeah. It's part of the night. So there are plenty of songs that I hear to this day, and I'll just have instant flashbacks of mm. the times that I've heard them when I was younger or whatever. <laughs> It'll take me back. So I so I take it very seriously. Like, yeah. yo, this is this is the soundtrack to the night. You can get somebody late. You can get somebody late, but you can also take somebody back to a place in time in their life that was beautiful. Right. You know, you can make somebody who's in their 40s, 50s, 60s feel like they're 20, 30 or 20 or 30 years old again because of the song when it came out and they mm. were in the club scene. Right. Or somebody your age right now, you're hearing this record and 10, 20 years from now, the way I played it or just the song in general is going to take you back to today, mm -hmm. even if just for a moment. So like music, music is very important. Like whether people realize it or not, because it helps imprint the mem me certain memories into their head. No, that's true. That's yeah. the truth. You ready for the shot, John? What oh, you want to have it? Yo, yeah, let's start it off. Let's, let's, let's flick that uh, <laughs> that pinwheel. Oh, boy. And then we'll get into the bullshit. Oh, the bullshit. Yeah, the bullshit. we'll get into the bullshit. So do you still feel like I'm Team Kendrick, or do you feel like, um, do you understand that I'm... I think you're still siding with Drake. I think uh, uh, I think yes, you right. want Drake to come out with a hit that you can play in the club or whatever the fuck nah, you want. Nah, you know what I want? I just want us all to get along, because the world is ugly right now. That's what I want. I'm tired of all the fussing and fighting and animosity. What are we at? What's it say? Kava? Casa? We talking about some shit, man. I'm about to go crazy. Yeah. Cheers uh, to you. Oh, no. To this. To this. <laughs> wow. Yeah, buddy. Hold on, hold on. Smooth.
Yeah, Casamigos. Casamigos is like that. Thank oh you. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we got the shot clock out the way. Um, so well, let's talk about for the culture, man. For the culture. Mm. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, just chocolate. I mean, if you want to get obscure, I would say butter pecans real good. God damn, you fancy. What? You fancy <laughs> butter pecan? Yeah, that's good. That's, real that's good. your joint. All right. Well, so my favorite uh, flavor is ice uh, is vanilla. Just vanilla. Just vanilla. Is it not like? Um, there's other vanilla, like vanilla bean. Isn't that different from a straight up vanilla? I don't know. That's a good question. I never thought about it. I never asked a question. But the way you said just vanilla is is why I, I cho- chose to do this for the culture. Because people are just like, yo, you just want you don't want nothing else. You just want you don't want no sprinkles, you don't want no chocolate. I'm like, nah, I just I fucks with the vanilla real heavy. It's really good to me, right? Uh-huh. Did you know that vanilla ice cream used to be only for the wealthy? I did not know that. Right, because it was very hard to come by. Okay. Yes. So, uh, vanilla planifolia is the orchid that is responsible for the vanilla bean, right? Vanilla plants can only be pollinated by the melipona bee. That's the only bee that knows how to oh, wow. to to pollinate it, right? So um, that made vanilla beans rare, expensive, and reserved for only the wealthy people and the wealthiest of the wealthy people, not even just like, Yo, you got bread. Like, no, you kings, queens, like, like. So you're telling me you couldn't afford vanilla ice cream when you were younger or something? No, and now no, this no. Is... I'm just saying, like, yo, people judge on the vanilla, vanilla ice cream, not realizing that at one point in time, that was. The flavor. That was the flavor of flavors. Like, most people didn't even know what that shit tasted like. Mm. Right. So. Um, mm. So in a botan- um, botanist in Paris and London were unsuccessfully tried um, with trying to get vanilla orchids to pollinate so that they could get vanilla beans, right? It wasn't until 1841 that a 12-year-old enslaved black boy by the name of Edmund Abias developed the process for hand-pollinating vanilla by using a thin sticker blade to lift the projecting part of the plant to separate the pollen from the stigma and then crushing the pollen and stigma together. Edmund's owner sent him to the other plantations to teach other slaves the process. Edmund was rewarded for with his freedom and was given the last name Abius. Oh shit! Right. Um, his owner wrote to the governor asking that this former slave be given cash a cash stipend for his role in the discovery of, of the fertilization, but received no response. The slave um, Edmund moved to Saint Dennis and worked as a kitchen servant. He somehow got involved in jewelry heist and was sentenced to ten years. <laughs> Beaumont again wrote to the, his owner, again wrote to the governor on his behalf, and the sentence was commuted to five years. And Abias was subsequently released. A man named John Claude Mike Michelle Claude Richard then set claim to have discovered the fertilization process before. Albius. Wow. He claimed he visited the island in 1838 and taught a group of horticulturists the technique. Again, Beaumont stepped in. Beaumont, his former slave owner, stepped in and wrote to uh, the island's official historian declaring Albius the true inventor, giving him all the credit entirely. Um, the letter survives as part of the island history. Albius returned to live close to Beaumont's plantation and married. He died August 9th, 1880 at the age of 51 at a hospital. He never received any profits from his discovery. 100 years after his death, the mayor of Reunion, the island they were at, made amends by erecting a statue of Albius and naming a street and school after him. I wanted to say that's beautiful, but it's kind of bittersweet. It's tragic. Yeah. It's tragic. It's not even bittersweet. It's just tragic. Like a motherfucking statue and a street and a school. How about you You figure out his lineage and you you cut a check for his ancestors? So did the slave master gain all the profit from that invention or was it? Well, it's kind of like an offshoot, right? So he could make vanilla bean and then make vanilla ice cream and other vanilla products, right? Mm-hmm. So you're going to make money off of that. Right. So and then like all the other plantations where he went and showed slaves how to the process, those slave plant, those plantation owners made money off of it. And that ultimately started the vanilla bean industry. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. So like literally everybody profited except for, well, he got his freedom. (laughs) He got out of jail on the jewelry heist thing. Right. I mean, the freedom's got to be worth the world, though. To a slave? To a slave, bro? 
Of course it is. I'm not saying it isn't, but what I but I also feel like he ended up living next to the slave owner, which is weird though. But you know, like you move it well because the guy was protecting him. Like that yeah. was the guy that came that showed up and was like, "Yo, got him out of jail." That's the guy that vouched for him. Like yeah. you know, because they didn't believe him at first. Like when he came, he was like when he showed him, he showed him the bean from the um the plant. They were like, "Nah, man, come on." So he had to prove that he actually knew what he was doing. So that must have been a cool slave master for nah, telling you that. <laughs> Don't say that. Nah, it's like, what the fuck? Like, no. <laughs> what is going on with that relationship? I mean, it's a relationship, right? It's, it's... <sighs> you allow a slave to come up to you and show you some shit? Like, I, I can't even imagine that. Like, it'd be like all hands on deck at that point. Like, get, nah. get, get. Nah. Not to make a joke out of it, but like, <laughs> he must have been cool. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, uh... I mean, listen, man. It's, <laughs> it's like the behavior and treatment of of um it varied yeah it's not like a monolith it wasn't right. one way right um and you know they can it's throughout history they can, you can say like yeah there were owners who were much kinder than others but kind is a relative thing right yeah. you still own a person yeah you still and so this is because this is not in america um I don't know, you know, if the chattel, the le the level of chattel slavery, the flavor of chattel slavery was worse, better, the same, whatever. Right. But because um, I'm thinking American slavery, that's what I'm imagining. Yeah, chat, so. which would be considered chattel slavery. But obviously, this was a version of chattel slavery um, because he's still, you know, any in any other area, like you know, slaves have been around since the beginning of time, right? Mm -hmm. um, but slavery was never acted in practice with in any of those other situations, the way that it was operated, acted with um, over here in America, mm -hmm. that, which they call it chattel slavery. Like Africans had slaves, right? We, our tribes battle and yeah. my tribe beats you. Prisoner right? of war. Yeah. Prisoner of war. But eventually you would be, become part of the family and not be a slave. Yeah. So, which is why in the very beginning Though the first slaves were given up because they were thinking like this is the way it's going to be. They had no, but as soon as they realized, recognized the the, the brutal brutality behind it, that's when like a lot of Africans died trying to prevent slaves from going through that door and getting on the ship and coming over here. So yeah, but we um, just value your vanilla ice cream. I would look at it differently. I might even try to like tell people about this fact if yeah. I can like regurgitate it. It's a lot of information, but like yeah. a slave pioneered a twelve-year-old boy. Wow, twelve years old. Figure that out. Figure that out. I wonder what his IQ was like if he were to be invested in something else. How smart can we actually gauge? You know, like it's pretty pretty smart. It seems like, but also just I think it comes down to just observation, right? Like if you're just. Like, you give anybody anything, if you give them the opportunity to kind of investigate and play with it, like, maybe he saw the B open it up. Not trying to say he's not intelligent. I'm just saying, like, it kind of just speaks to how important it is for people to be exposed to things and have the opportunity to play with it and study and, it, and, study it and, yeah. and experiment, right? Yeah. So, um, I yeah. mean, he just, like, yo, he got aggressive with it, though. You think about it, like, you know, I'm just going to open this thing up and... <laughs> It smashed, yeah. it smashed the piling up against the, the, the uh, I forget what the thing is. So, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy, right? No, nah, that's that was awesome. Yeah, man. So you learned something. You can um, you can go ahead and uh, and regurgitate that. You remember, twelve year old enslaved boy was the one. Simple that as made. that. Yeah, it's as simple as that. You don't have to make it all that complicated. But even the fact that like only white people had the vanilla was. Enough. Only wealthy people. Oh, I'm saying white people, but yeah. we know what that meant too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you say wealthy, it, it makes it a little bit more comfortable for people. And sometimes, if you want them to learn shit, you got to make it comfortable, even yeah. though they don't deserve for it to be comfortable. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. Yeah, man. It's all about being palatable. All right, man. Are you ready for me to roll this dice? Yeah, the I'm sex excited. Dice. <laughs> um, the segs. Yeah, the segs, dice. So here at the Culture of Misfits, we're really trying to help you have a better romantic life, better sex life. So I'm going to roll the dice twice, and this is going in whatever dice say you need to do with your partner, okay? So for the first roll, it says lick below the waist. Lick below the waist. Think you can get down with that? 
Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. All right. Because, you know, some cats is like, no, I ain't doing that, son. I ain't doing that. All right. And then the second one is blow question mark. Mm. So that means you can figure out what it is you want to blow on. You can blow on the ear. If you want to blow on the ear, please be gentle. Don't be like gentle blow. I got a question for you. Yes. So did you buy that that pair of dice in one or did it come with some box set that came with a blindfold and some no, handcuffs? No, they just came as regular dice, like in a little package, if I remember correctly. If I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm sure there's I'm sure that there is a that they got kits for all the things. I bet you if you look on Amazon right now or whatever, there's a whole... Like, you a freak, man. I just had a... Here we go. <laughs> Yo, man, I, I'm experienced. How about that? I have... I mean, you can learn a lot, man. From from older ladies? Yeah, for sure. I've, no, yeah. I know you got your older lady thing, but I'm just saying in general, like, how you, this is how you figure things out. It's like my man with the vanilla... With the, uh, vanilla. Orchid, right? Right, right, you right. Know, you got to have time to, to experience and play and study and, and all that stuff. And these dice, these dice, man, this is this is part of the fun. Yeah, and I guess people do need that. They do. Like, yo, you run into your whole, like, routine. Like, yo, okay, the same moves. You start eating ass off some dice, though? It's crazy, like... <laughs> Yes, but then you're going to love the Well, somebody's going to love the dice even more. They're going to be like, let's roll the dice again. Let's see. <laughs> no, I, listen, man. Would you find, Would you say that you're conservative or liberal or somewhere in the middle when it comes to your sexual activities and, the, and the, your willingness to do things? I would say somewhat in the middle. Okay. Um, I feel like the liberal aspect of sex activity comes from pornography. Yeah. You know, people seeing what they see in in these acting sort of environments, like they're definitely putting on the show. Right. Yeah, and, it's and, performative. And, yes. Right. And people don't acknowledge that enough. Like this isn't real. But they don't realize it. They don't understand that. Like, yes, it is. It's performative. Right. Like, in the same way they think these reality shows are, te- are real. Right. It's like, no, it's not real. Like it's just set up. Right. Like how far would I go? Like, I mean, put it in a different hole, but you know, other than that, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's well I mean you're still you're young you're young and I, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way it just means that you got a lot you have a lot of learning and experiencing that you get to have, have enjoy so yeah. that's a good thing yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah. a great thing I'm I'm happy for you man <laughs> oh you wish you could go back in time and learn some shit again I wish I could go back in time and use the shit that I learned to this point back then. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, and of course, yeah. Yeah, that like, yeah, and like, that, uh, I'd be a problem. <laughs> I'd be a problem. Like, it, it probably, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good if I could go back. If I went back in time, I'd be definitely fuck my life up. <laughs> Seriously, so. All right, man. So, let's play stupid games and win stupid prizes. This is crazy, man. I. It's kind of heartbreaking, but so a Chinese man is now bedridden for life after he sold his kidney as a teenager to the black market to buy the latest Apple products. Wang Shang Kun was 17 years old when he made the fatal decision. Shortly after the illegal surgery, he began suffering from a decreased level of kidney function. Eight years on the 25 years old is now bedridden for life. And after his, after his remaining organ failed, Mr. Mr. Shang Kun had sold his kidney to the black market organ harvesters in April 2011, where he received um, $4,500. God damn, man. Yeah, it's not a lot of money at all. No. Purchasing an iPhone 4. Damn. And I had (laughs) two with the funds. He said, why do I need a second kidney? One is enough. He said in reports at the time, Mr. Wang now spends his days in bed and relies on dialysis to survive his kidney failure. Local Chinese media recently revealed the illegal surgery had caused him to develop renal deficiency, which is believed to have led to the infection due to the unsanitary setting of where it took place and the apparent lack of post-operative care. The operation occurred in the central province of Hunan without his parents' consent. It was reportedly undertaken by two doctors who were also employed at local hospitals. At the time, Chinese newspaper Xinhua reported that Wang first made contact with the alleged harvesters through internet chat rooms. <sighs> he Wei reportedly reportedly the leader of the gang, then made arrangements to hire a surgeon who worked at a nearby military hospital. iPhone two, like iPhone four, iPad two. I mean, he was a kid, seventeen. I know, I know. I know. So we, we got to cut him some slack. He said he only needed one kidney. That is true. That is true. <laughs> so, so true. It. 
it's it's heartbreaking. I mean that's yeah. but yes, you're right. We have to give him some slack because his frontal lobe like doesn't fully <laughs> form until age twenty four. Wang so, Shang Kun. Yeah, man. Yeah. Seventeen years old. Um he was balling with his iPad high iPhone four and uh, Yeah, iPad I mean two. for the doctor that they hired for this procedure to allow it the procedure to happen in some such an unsanitary, you know, environment. It's just like Bro. I just I guess it just comes with it all. Like Yeah, like listen, man. I expected it, a doctor to still do his job, is what to I'm have saying. Standards? Yeah. I feel like the problem with China is that there's too many people. Okay. Like the more of something there is, the less value that it has. And so when you're talking about you, you have a couple billion people, people become less valuable because there's billions of them. So why would you care if this 17 year old boy, whether he lives or die, all you want is the kidney. And, you know, I, who knows how much, it, well, people know how much a kidney goes on the black market, Yeah, but yeah, why would you care? Like your ability to step in someone else's shoes is really commendable. Because like <laughs> I can't even imagine like there being a, a surplus of people to the point where I don't give a fuck about a seventeen year old boy. Like yeah, yeah, I, I mean, can't even imagine that. It's scary, but yeah, like so many niggas, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yo, like yo, seriously, it's just like yeah. yo, like yeah. When there's less of something, it has value. It means something to you. When you have a a lot of it, it's like yeah, yeah, okay, you know. He doesn't care enough about himself to keep both of his kidneys. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> We're not talking about somebody that was like led astray or like duped in a way, or like you know those stories about people that they wake up in a hosp- in a hotel room in a thing of ice and they got the scar and it's like call for right. Like nah, he like I'm sure he was talked into it, but it's he basically did it on of his own free will. I didn't know the iPhone culture was that crazy over there for a motherfucker to want to do that in China where they make that shit. Yo, listen. So the iPhone four. I worked at Apple around the iPhone 4 time. And resellers used to wear disguises to come into the store and buy iPhones. Because there was a limit. Like, you could only buy two a day. Mm. Um, and then they would sell them unlocked. So they would pay, they would buy them whole, retail, like $800 a phone, and then sell them overseas for thousands. Cause they weren't, cause like the iPhone wasn't a, like they made them in China, but I think for the longest time they weren't even allowed to be sold in China. Right? Mm-hmm. There was just different countries, and so people would come into the store. And when I say wear disguises, I mean wear disguises. <laughs> Motherfuckers had fake mustaches on. They would put glasses on. Yeah. They would change their clothes. Um, they would hire people in the mall. So you could be at at Christiana Mall and the, and walking through the food court, and one of the resellers would be like, "Yo, uh, you want to make some money?" And they would pay you to go into the Apple store and buy. They give you a gift card and you and you would go and you would buy an unlocked iPhone and then bring it back. And then they would um, pay you. That's a good perspective because I know how I felt about iPhone 4s when I was that young. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I had a fucking Obama phone, you know, and I was being bullied or whatever. But right, right, right. I didn't know it actually like escalated into adults. And Yo, it was so much money made. There was one... Um, this is, it's not funny, but it's funny. It was <laughs> these people were no, notorious resellers, right? And so they they would have a booth in the food court, and they would pay people to go and it, go into the store and buy phones. And it wasn't even just phones; it was like Nintendo Wii's, like whatever game, whatever was hot. They were buying, paying people to go into the stores, buy them, bring it to them, and they would pay them. So there was one guy. They gave a guy. Um, they gave him a gift card. He came in the store. <laughs> And he was he asked the employee, he was like, yo, how much is on this card, this gift card? And it was like 10 grand or like five or 10 grand on the gift card, right? Oh, All right, as promised, we're done. Not finished, we're just done, okay? Remember, you can follow me at DJ Silk on Instagram, Spill, X, Threads, and then DJ Silk 12 on TikTok, and of course on Mixcloud.com, DJ Silk 12, that is, DJ Silk 12 for Soul School Mixes. Also, you can catch me on WEAA 88.9 FM every Friday morning from 9 to 9.20 a.m. for the Soul School Mix with Erica Kane and Lena J. You can stream it on WEAA.org or you can go ahead and download the WEAA app on your favorite app store situation, whether you're an Apple person or Android user. All right, catch you next week for part two.